Hello, everyone. I want to uh, give you a brief introduction to Chapter 6, and I'm going to do this in uh, two different videos to try to keep it into digestible units. Um, let me get my picture out of the way. Okay, so Chapter 6 is about long-term assets. Those are assets that last more than one period. Um, at the end of Chapter 6 is a couple of pages about intangible assets. And for exam purposes, I want you to know two of them. I want you to know what a patent is and also what a copyright is and how long the legal life is for each of them. <clears throat> so you can read those on pages 178 and 179. Briefly, a patent protects you if you have an, an invention to keep other people from copying it, and a patent lasts for 20 years. A copyright protects you if you have some sort of an artistic creation like a song or a book, and the legal life of a copyright is 70 years past the death of the author. So it serves to protect the estate and the descendants um, for 70 years past the life of the author of the artistic work. Okay, so in chapter six, we're talking about long-term assets, and I have three topics I want to talk about. What to do when you acquire a long-term asset, how to depreciate it over its useful life, and then in the next video, we'll talk about what to do when we actually get rid of it. <clears throat> now, look, when we talk about these long-term assets, like we're talking about vehicles, a building, equipment, again, things that we're going to be using for multiple periods, and since they last multiple periods, instead of expensing the whole thing right now, we're going to uh, set up an asset account, and then we'll depreciate it gradually over the life of the asset. <clears throat> now, most of these items that last for multiple periods take a lot of capital, a lot of money. That's why we call them uh, capital expenditures. In other words, we're spending a lot of money to buy these assets that will last for multiple periods. Um, so when, when, when you spend money, you're, of course, going to credit cash, or maybe you're going to credit a liability account. The debit... If it's going to last for multiple periods, we would debit an asset account. And if it's going to be, if it's something that its usefulness is used up immediately, uh, then we're going to debit an expense account. So when you uh, purchase a long-term asset that benefits multiple periods, and we set up an asset account, that's called capitalizing that expenditure. So when you capitalize something, that means you're setting up an asset account. And, of course, you will eventually record it as an expense, but you'll do that gradually over time. So the question really is, when you spend this money, should you debit an expense account immediately, or should you debit an expense account gradually over the life of that asset that you purchased? So that's what Chapter 6 is about. It's about capitalizing those expenditures and then depreciating them. Now, when you capitalize an expenditure, again, like I said, you're going to set up an asset account, and the cost of that asset includes everything that you give up to obtain that asset. So if you have to pay taxes or if you have to pay shipping charges if you bought some equipment and you had to pay somebody to put it together, then all of that would be the cost of obtaining that asset and getting it ready for its intended use. So all of that would go into the cost of that asset. So that's how we deal with the acquisition of it. But one thing, let me, let me point out here, is that always in the back of kind of our minds when we're talking about the proper way to account for something, we always have this idea of materiality uh, in mind. 
Materiality has to do with how significant an item is. So if something is material, it means it's significant. In other words, it, it's big enough to make a difference. If it's immaterial, that means it's insignificant, kind of trivial. So, so for example, let's say you purchase something like a trash can, and that trash can might last you for years if you don't kick it and put a hole in it. But even though it's going to last you for a long time, it's of insignificant value. So instead of capitalizing it and expensing it gradually over time, we'll just go ahead and expense it right away and be done with it. So in any area of accounting, really, you have this concept of materiality at work where it's a judgment call in terms of is this item significant enough to really matter that we do it correctly or can we just kind of be done with it and uh, that especially comes into play when you're dealing with uh, trivial expenditures even if it's something that would last for a lengthy period okay but for our purposes when we purchase a long-term asset everything is material so step one when you purchase a long-term asset you debit an asset account and then we're going to depreciate it over its useful life now we've already talked about depreciation to some extent but let's talk about it a little bit further uh, let's see here okay so up here in my graph I have a five-year timeline and let's suppose that we purchased some equipment for $32,000, that was its cost. We think it's going to last us for five years, and at the end of five years, we believe we could get $2,000 back. We would call that the salvage value, or sometimes it's called the uh, scrap value, or sometimes it's called the residual value. But anyway, it's the it's the leftover value as a, as a used piece of equipment. <clears throat> so over that five-year life, we expect to be losing that $30,000 difference, the original cost minus the salvage value, and that's the dollar amount we're going to depreciate over that five-year life. So that would be $6,000 a year or $500 a month. So when you are depreciating a long-term asset, you take its original cost, you subtract the salvage value, and that difference is what you're going to depreciate over its useful life. We call this the straight line method of depreciation because we're depreciating it evenly over time. And there are other methods, but that's the only one uh, we're going to deal with. Okay, so we purchased a $32,000 piece of equipment. So when we purchase it, we're going to debit equipment for $32,000, and I've already got that set up here as an asset. And then we're going to depreciate it at $6,000 per year. Now previously, the way we depreciated things was we debited depreciation expense and credited equipment. Okay, I'm not sure if that error message is uh, preventing me from going forward or not, but we'll just kind of ignore it for now. So in the past, we have always debited depreciation expense and credited equipment. Well, let me show you, and I've got that in red, that journal entry. So let me show you what would happen if we do that. If you credit the equipment for 6000 then... Um, at the end of the first year, you would credit the equipment for six thousand. You would have a balance in that account of twenty-six thousand. And then at the end of the next year, you would bring it down another six thousand. That's twenty thousand. And then at the end of the next year, bring down another six thousand. So um, what you're missing here is we can see that how the remaining balance in the account is coming down, but we're not able to see 
Um, it doesn't really give us a sense about how old the asset is. However, what if we were to distinguish between the cost of the asset and how much has been depreciated to date? So I've got that picture right here. Let's see if I can get my picture out of the way. So, okay, so in this section, I'm showing you that our equipment was $32,000. That never changed. But the accumulated depreciation was gradually going up $6,000 each year. And that meant that the remaining balance, we call this the book value, the value on the books, that means that that remaining balance was coming down. So you can see that the book value I have represented here is the same as what I had pictured before in the red, but now I'm keeping the original cost and the accumulated appreciated appreciation separate from each other. And that allows you to see something about how the asset is aging over time. So from now on, got this uh, here, from now on, we are not going to credit the equipment account as we depreciate it. What we're going to credit is a new account called accumulated depreciation. So let me kind of back off that a little bit. Okay. So what I have in red here, we are not going to do from now on. What we're going to do, like for example, at the end of the first year, when we depreciate this asset, we're going to debit depreciation expense like we always have, but we're going to credit accumulated depreciation. And this is a, this account is, is a contra asset account. It's in the asset section. Let me get rid of this. It's in the asset section, but it has a credit balance. And so instead of putting that credit in the equipment account, we're just going to start collecting those credits for depreciation in this contra asset account called accumulated depreciation. So uh, what you'll see, let me show you how this kind of builds up over time. <clears throat> so at the end of the first year, we've debited depreciation expense and credited accumulated depreciation. And the equipment minus the accumulated depreciation gets reported on the balance sheet. And the depreciation expense, of course, is on the income statement. I'm going to get rid of this stuff in the red so it doesn't confuse us. That's what we're not going to do. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then the depreciation expense account would be closed at the end of the year. And we come back into the second year. At the end of the second year, we're going to record depreciation expense again. Cover that. And credit accumulated depreciation. So when I post this journal entry, we're going to debit depreciation expense. Oops. Debit depreciation expense. The credit goes to the accumulated depreciation. And now we have accumulated of $12,000. That's the both years together. The $6,000 of expense for this year goes on to the income statement. The accumulated depreciation shows up on the balance sheet and it brings down that book value. So this, this is at the end of the second year. You can see we have only $6,000 of depreciation expense, but $12,000 of accumulated depreciation. And then that depreciation expense account would be closed 
again, like we always do. And then at the end of the third year, again, we would depreciate it. And to depreciate, you always debit the depreciation expense, credit the accumulated depreciation, that's that contract account. And when I do that, the expense account is debited. The accumulated depreciation gets another 6000 credit. That brings it to 18000 So again, the annual depreciation shows up on the income statement, but the accumulated depreciation shows up on the balance sheet. So the only thing I'm changing from what we had done before is instead of crediting the equipment account anytime we're depreciating an asset, from now on, the credit goes to this contra asset account called accumulated depreciation. And that way, we can constantly see how much depreciating is, depreciation has accumulated over time. So the income statement shows the expense for the year, but the balance sheet has the accumulated depreciation to date. Okay, so that's, that's it on the depreciation and in the next video we'll talk about getting rid of an asset.